Hello guys, today I'll be going over maths and numbers in Python. Um, overall, there are three types of numeric, the three numeric types in Python, integers, floats, and complex numbers. If you're not familiar with complex numbers, they're basically dealing with imaginary numbers, which if you take an algebra or calculus, you may go over that a little bit. Um, so to get started, um, here's a few examples of what each of them looks like. Don't freeze on me, computer. All right, <clears throat> x equals one, that's an integer. y equals 2.8, that's a float. Now, complex numbers are something I haven't gone over before. Um, they use the J keyword, well, key character, which in this case identifies it as a complex number in Python. All right, now let's go over the typing. Um, let's print these out and see if we can get our types printed out as well. So print out the types of each of them. X is identified as an integer. Y is a float. Z is a complex number. And I'm curious about Z since I've never really done this before. I want to see what this, if I were to just print out Z, what this would look like. And it just prints it out as IJ. Integers are basically whole numbers positive or negative without decimals of unlimited length so let me just show you a few examples let me just uh, print them out they're all printed out as integers actually let me recopy these outputs so we can know their type as well just makes it a lot more uh, easy to follow let me just uh, clear out the terminal and yeah all of them are integers and regardless of how long or short they are, positive or negative, integers will be integers. Now, uh, let's go over floats. Floats, also called floating point numbers, are numbers that are positive or negative, but they contain decimals. Basically, if, it's, if it has decimals, it's a float. If it doesn't, it's an integer. Sorry, I'm still not really used to recording, so every now and then my accent kind of starts leaking out and it just makes it hard to understand but yeah so all of them are floats 1.1 1.0 1 and negative 35.59 regardless of how big or small if it has decimals it's a float and floats can also be scientific numbers with an e indicating a power of 10 so if you want to write them as the following 35 times e raised to the power of 3, that's x. y is 12 times e to the power of 4, except it's a capital E, but it's the same thing. And then z is negative 87.7 multiplied by e to the power of 100. Let's see what this looks like. And yeah, here we go. 35,000 for x. 120,000 for Y and a god knows what that is for a C. It's a pretty long one. Anyways, let's move on. Complex numbers are written with a J character as an imaginary part. So here's a few examples of them. So for x we have 3 plus 5j, y is just 5j, and then z is negative 5j. So yeah, they're identified as complex numbers. x is printed out as the equation itself put in parentheses, 5j is just 5j. And then for negative 5j, it's negative 0 minus 5j. 0 can't really be a negative number, but 
I'm guessing this is basically taking every this is basically taking 0 minus 5j and then multiplying that by negative 1. I, I'm guessing that that's how it's doing it. And just like with strings and basically just like with casting, you can convert from one type to another. So you can convert an integer to a float, a float to a complex, then a complex to an integer or a float. So let me just show you an example of that. So here we have an example of an integer float and complex. And then if you want to convert from an integer to a complex, uh, I mean, an ah, sorry, if you want to convert from an integer to a float, you just type in, you just cast it as a float. So X is now casted as a float and it's sent to A. So print the type. And the type of A and then print A itself and now A is shown as 1.0 whereas we initially assigned it as just 1 and instead of a 1.0 now if you want to convert from a float to an integer you simply just cast it as an integer so y is a float, but I cast it as an integer. So now, let's print b. And now, 218 has been reduced to 2. Because an integer will round down the float value. And then if you want to convert from an integer to a complex number, you simply just use the complex keyword. And now 2.8 is printed out as 2.8 plus 0j. So that's the complex variation of 2.8. Actually, I was wrong. You cannot convert complex numbers into a different type of number. So let's test that out. b equals z but casting it as an integer. So I'm guessing this will give us an error. Let's see. Yep, it's an error. Error type, you cannot convert a complex to an integer. Let's try float just to be sure. And you cannot convert a complex to a float. Oh, so I guess that's right. And the last thing about numbers is the random function. Python does not have a random function to make a random number, but Python has a built-in module called random that can be used to make a random number. So as with modules, you have to import them. So I'm not sure, I've made a video on modules and importing, but I'm not sure whether I'm putting, whether I'm uploading that video before or after this one. But just as a quick ref reminder and reference, um, just type in the import keyword and then you can import a module. Modules can be something you have made yourself or they can be imported from the Python repository. In this case, random is a module that's built into Python, but it's not signed. Well, I don't think it's built into Python because we have imported, but it's, it's in the Python library. So we can import it and then print out a random range from 1 to 10. Basically, it will display a random number between 1 and 9. So again, dealing with indexes, 1 will be 0, so 10 will be 9. Just uh, whatever number there is minus 1. So yeah, 8, 7, 7, 7, 2, 6, 5, 7, 5, 8, just going through random numbers between 1 and 0 and 9 and just printing them out. So every time you call the function, every time you call random.randrange with what with whatever you have in the inside it, it's going to it's going to ah, sorry, it's going to pull out a random number that fits between the variables. Um, let's try between 1 and 100. So now we have 45, 42, 33, 61, 98, 78, 70, 61, 2, 6, 73, 69, 78, 30, etc., and 1. 
So yeah, that's just how the random function works. You can use this to create random effects. Um, it'll, it'll, uh, you can use this to create functions that deal with the random, with randomness. Um, if you want to use a noise function, for instance, you want to create a noise generation, you would use the random function. Um, if you want to do procedural generation, random is pretty useful for that. Um, what else? Random will be useful for cryptography. If you want to create a random password, there are plenty of re there are plenty of reasons why you would want to use the random function. So it's important to learn that. With Python, you have to import it and then use random dot rand range. Um, what else? Module random, random variable generators, integers, sequences, distribution. I'll just go back to that again. But yeah, that's just a brief description of the random module. Anyways, that's all I want to go over with numbers for now. Um, later, I will be creating a video on lists. So keep an eye out for that one. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace out.